nobody's injuring their neck or their head or something in the shoulder, potentially, you know, the horse collar is for whiplash. Hey. And obviously these, these kids are well coached and disciplined and uh, they've been taught how to tackle properly. And, you know, in the game, it's just a uh, high intensity, high tempo. And sometimes, you know, you don't get that perfect fit and you just want to get a hand on. And he had a blocker actually. I think he, I think he only reached cause he had a blocker. Yeah. He was being blocked at the time. So, you know, that just uh, missing your assignment there, or getting blocked, just trying to get a hand on. Who was the tackler? Um, I believe it was number 16, but I'm not too sure. I believe it would be a, the, it was the outside linebacker, I believe. Might have been 36, uh, but I'm not entirely sure who the tackler was. But it looks like the injured player is getting up and walking off the field. Seems to be okay. Seems to be okay. Hopefully we see him in a couple more plays. Yeah, hopefully, you know, he's able to come back into the game and play and there's nothing too serious going on. We uh, we never want to see a player hurt. That is... Uh, that's the worst thing. Yeah, that's the worst thing when you see a guy go down, especially as a coach or a teammate. Ooh. Number 37. Number the 64, tackle. Albert Bro goes straight ahead for... Curtis Price. Yard, he's tackled by Curtis number 37, Price. Curtis he Price. It's going to be second down and eight. He makes a nice tackle to stop the run there. They only get two yards. Cool. Always got these. Always, always have these big, big linemen. And it's, it's hard to stop. It's yeah. It's hard to stop. You know, uh, Spear Heights this year, I think they have the biggest, their senior team has the biggest, biggest line. Biggest line. Yeah, the biggest Definitely. offensive line. And they have some pretty big D linemen. And uh, that's uh, what's driving their offense right now. Pass, 39. Oh, right through the hands of 39. Couldn't get a hand. Oh, couldn't get 39. Of it. Just number nine, Chase Charisola. Ball was thrown just a little, a little short. Nick, Nick Deering. Deering. Ball's incomplete. I've heard he's pretty good, didn't he? Eight. Yeah, Nick Deering has been uh, very good for this Superior Heights offense this year. He's he's played. Uh, you know, he's done a couple jet number sweeps, two, and Nixon I believe he plays defense as well. Play. Or I know he does play special teams, and he makes quite a few tackles. I believe he plays corner. Love special teams. Oh, yeah. Special teams it's is so fun. It's a third of the game, and it's uh, – Wow. Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's a big jump, that Steelhawks offensive line. Number 66. I don't think we have – oh, we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keegan Staniforth jumps on the play. It's going to be illegal procedure against right. the Superior Heights Steelhawks. This is tough. Like oh, I guess it's as well. yeah, third it's down, down and 13. It is now third down and 13. Yeah, I see. With 3.25 left to go in the first quarter. And Cora, you know, Superior Heights is running a lot of time off this clock right now. But uh, they're not getting very far down the field. Cora's defense is holding them. You know, they, they're they taking a lot of time between plays and they're making sure, you know, and everybody knows what's going on and they've still got a couple penalties with the uh, full starts. Oh, there's a fumble. Fumbled. There's a mix-up on the exchange oh, between like the quarterback and the running back, number 39. Grady Boston. Lee. No, that's no, that's, that, that's, that's four. Four. Uh, number thirty-nine. Number Nick Deering oh. doesn't receive that handoff Jordan very well, and it is fumbled, and they lose a couple yards there. It's going to be fourth down. I believe they're coming out to punt. Yep. I was going to say they were punting last last down because I, uh, I was yeah, so used to uh, the <laughs> three down. Yeah, seniors play three down football, and that is definitely a big change when you're you know you got you know, an extra down or two to to make some to make a play and to get those happen. yards and yeah. you know, with four down you got oh, oh punt goes straight up in the air. And the the punt doesn't go ten yard I Short believe it only goes about four yards. So the refs blow it dead. For safety. So Cora will take over first down Cora's and ten gonna from take the over height, Superior Heights thirty four yard line. I believe line. it's gonna be on the thirty four yard line. It's yeah. going to be first down to 10 for this Cora offense. That, that's good field position for this offense. Yeah, that's – you know, they, they could be in the end zone in a couple plays and – Three or four. You know, Definitely. They they have a strong offense. They uh, – I believe their – their top running back right now is Nathan Gazzetti. 
but he's yeah. And hockey. he is at hockey this week, but so. uh, right now they have 29 Peyton Melkor. Now good back because like that was a good stop by that team wow. the line. Amazing. Spear, Spear Heights defensive line gets a tackle in the good backfield. It looks like it's going to be. No oh. Game makes it second down and ten. I believe they gained about a yard ish. Number 32, Max Clement with the tackle for no, the Steelhawks. Same position. Second and ten. Oh, yeah, look at that. Spear second Heights' 10. defense has been very dominant. A minute 30 left in the first. Throughout the season, that's been their kind of savior. Their defense has been able to get on the field and make some stops. Carson but, uh, Pettit. Oh, he can't. He gets the outside. Number 48. Oh, tackle. For Cora, Ethan Sorreo. That's a big man to run the ball. And, Number 48, you know, Ethan Cora Sorreo definitely the utilizes their fullbacks. Ethan Sorreo is a big boy, and he can definitely make a hit. It's like uh, Thibodeau. Yeah, Caleb Thibodeau for the senior team. He's a big boy, and he... He will carry guys down the field. Yeah, I've been a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's it's fun. It's great. Oh yeah, you're uh, you're definitely enjoying it as a corner out there. <laughs> probably weighing. Probably. 60. Yeah, you you have you have some a decent weight for a high school corner, and you know Thibodeau is just that big beefy guy. You know he plays hockey and he makes big hits during hockey games yeah. as well. You know we get he gets much praise from his coaches. Hard to take him down. Oh, yeah, sure. he's, he's definitely a strong unit. Third and five is the Cora offense lines up. Cora could be stopped here. Sloss. Oh. Sloss hands it off to 34. number 34, who had a big run just before. Oh, here number he comes. Oh, he gets the first down. He escapes a tackle. Breaks a oh, couple tackles. Oh, another one. He's still going. And Cora drives. Wow. wow. Number 34, A.J. Cochimilio. Nice run by number 34, uh, he, A.J. Cochimilio. He goes. He is definitely. And him and down. Melkor are filling in great for, uh, for Gazzetti. Nathan Gazzetti. Yeah. You know, Gazzetti's one of the fastest kids in the city. Number 52, is, he's Graydon also Brock a uh, track and field athlete. He does, I believe he won the 100 meter sprint and he was at. Offsa he did go to Offsa. He did he go. Yeah, he went Offsa. He went to Offsa. And I but believe like he he did place at Offsa. I believe. I no. He, no. No. He. I, it was like. It was uh, thirteenth. Oh okay. Came cert. It was. It's crazy because he's like we see him running and he's, he's amazingly Movement fast. Yeah. Thinking he's coming thirteenth at Offsa. It's insane. The core Colts. Looks like we Five have an injury timeout here. 15. We have an injured core player on the field. We do have an illegal procedure play uh, call against Cora as well. Uh, so it'll be backed up five yards. Cora's going to be backed up five yards. It's going to be first and 15. We only got about 19 yards to the end zone now. It's not a lot. I believe of, that is the lot. end of the quarter. Yep. I'm not sure if the penalty negates the end of the quarter and they got to run one more play or. I don't know. I think they'll just go right into the second. No, oh well, I believe that the quarter has to end on a play, and it can't end on a penalty, just like the game can't end on a penalty. So it I looks like so. Cora will get one more play for this quarter, and then the next quarter will start. What do you What do you think about the Superior Heights defense? Uh, they've yeah. definitely been. They haven't struggled against this Cora offense, who's been very dominant. It's that bend but not break, you know. Yeah, they, they, they've allowed one touchdown, but it was a it was a good pass and a good catch. You can't really do much about that. It was yeah, good coverage too. So I mean, but yeah, no, they're doing they're doing pretty good. It's uh, it's not so I wouldn't say surprising, but very. Yeah, it's not unique. it's not out of character for this defense no. to make big stops all. and to bend a little but not break and. You know, this you know, having you know the the field position that they were set up on is it's not in their favor at all. Yeah, and definitely, like that the field position is a it's a detriment to some defenses. You know, you you get lined up somebody you know on the thirty or the twenty, and that's that's everybody's game plan. You know, you need if you can get twenty yards, you know, yeah. that's okay. But you know, 
you get back on your own 20 or your own 35, say off a field goal, and you know you you can get those 20 yards, but then you got to punt because you can't get any more. That's uh, definitely uh, yeah, one of the. Yeah, no. It was it was a good position for that offense, guaranteed at least three points. Yeah, uh, Cora does have. I believe they do have a strong leg at their kicking position. I believe it is Cuglietta today kicking. I believe it is Nixon Blair that usually kicks for oh, them. Oh, fumble the in the backfield. They Sloss. were setting up to pass again. Sloss fumbles. And this ball is recovered by the quarterback, number eight, Bryce, Bryson Sloss. Sloss it looks like it's going to be second and long when we start the second quarter. Second and... Number 40. It's going to be 20. With the uh, oh, that's a long time. It's going to be second and 21, I the believe. The end of one quarter, the Cora Colts lead seven to nothing. It's Yikes. now the end of the quarter, so they will switch sides, and the Cora will be the Cora will be going into the end into the right hand end zone. I believe they're going to stop for a drink or talk to Coach Bernabucci on the way down. Booch. We He's are coach. Echo Bay people, <laughs> so. We, uh, Bucci's is a great place to go to eat. Mm. And, uh, you know, his, Bernabucci's dad is the owner of that. I believe it is, you know, they, they support Cora quite a bit and, uh, football in the Sioux. They, uh, they also support a, a lot of hockey in the, and, uh, the Sioux Steelers. Do you, do you like the Steelers more, like them playing in high school? Uh, well, playing for the Steelers this summer, it was definitely interesting. You know, guys work around work and whatnot, and, you know, you got to practice with 10 guys, but your next practice is 30 guys. You, you never really know what you're getting. Oh, here's a, oh, a Just big overthrown. Sloss by Sloss. A little bit overthrown to number 34, Koch Emilio. Grayson Sloss is pass intended for number 34. If he got AJ that ball, yeah. If he got that he ball, he had a couple point. lead blockers there, and he probably would have been gone. But uh, I'd say, way he's been running today. Yeah, That's he's he's definitely a hard runner. Chase he's Christie quick. With the coverage on the play, and uh, he's definitely off. filling in for you know senior guys that are away today. Second quarter. Oh no! Here comes another Scrambles. play action pass. Can he get it? That's away. Good play with the DB. Can't do much. It's that was I that was probably that was better than yeah. Well, that's down, that's down the down thing. You, you always, I mean, Jacob down Nelson. a distance Jacob wise. I mean, that was probably a smart play to. I believe it was number twenty. Twenty. Uh, right. No. Uh, Twenty-one. I don't know. I can't see that far, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a good play by a DB though. Yes. Twenty-one. Yeah. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. So twenty-one. Chase Christie. Def defended that ball and it's a smart play because you know he catches that ball and he gets tackled on the one yard line I would have just, just caught it and fell honestly yeah but then your offense is backed up you know Cora has a pretty strong defense you know yeah, they can do. get into the backfield oh, missed field oh he drops Cora, it Cora number three Cooley and Micah Cooley at a see how far he can run he's escaped some oh and there's oh. a horse collar believe that that looked like a little bit of a horse collar so that's probably the call uh mm -hmm. number the field goal is wide and 96 the 86 number 86 Frazier yeah. Moody 86 Frazier Moody who returns that kick line, the good kick the good the good return yeah Mike Cooley yeah just missed just wide missed. left and it's also a penalty on the play when it is a field goal you are allowed to return it and that will be your field position so <laughs> plus but, uh, plus the yards they get off this penalty yes plus the yardage off the penalty but usually there isn't a penalty yeah, well. but uh, if he was tackled in the end zone then it would have been a point I believe it would have been a, a rouge, rouge. Love that. I love that term it's so fun yeah <laughs> it is a fancy French word to say uh, but yeah it's red why do they call it a rouge I, <laughs> I don't know why they call it a rouge but uh, that is definitely that's something we gotta look, we gotta up, look up because <laughs> we'll, we'll get it. Now. We'll get it all looked up, but uh, it is a horse collar penalty. 
It'll be first down at the 35 for Spear so Heights. Yard horse collar penalty against the Colts. We got 11:21 in the second quarter. You know you don't want to give Coras any any more points than you need to. So getting that kick out of the end zone was a great decision. You know if you're up in the game by a couple points and you know you you can give up that point, but uh, you know you never want to give up points if you can avoid it. All right, it's handed off. Looks like number 64. Oh. Albert Perrell. Number 64, Albert Perrell. They used to the use a red flag to signal the ruse. Oh, okay. Yeah, it used to just be called a single. Number 37, Curtis Price. So I guess the ruse used to be called a single, and they used to use a red flag to indicate that it was a single, and now they just call it a ruse, and they eliminated that flag, probably for confusion yeah. reasons yeah. between <laughs> the flags. Uh, but... Albert Perot with a nice run. He gets about five yards. Oh. Here here comes, I believe that is number 39, 39. Nick Deering again number with another hard Nick run. Deering on the carry. He gets three of the third down and three. It's going to be third and short here for Superior Heights. They're, they are number moving 20, the ball Turner quite a bit. Dickinson with the tackle for the they, Colts. Uh, they have been doing pretty well. You know, they've helped court to seven points right now, which – you know, isn't isn't an easy thing to do no. as they've been dominating teams all season long. Oh. Looks like Sh Cora showing blitz here. Oh, big hole! Oh wow! Ben and he's Tre going. Ben Trevisanu with a big with that's oh, a my hard Lord. run. Breaks a tackle, nice gets the extra hard yards. I believe that is about a 25 a to 30 yard run hops. there. Number seven with a tackle. Number seven, Nathan. Nathan Hyam, Hyam just tackle. catches him on the outside. If he didn't get there, he was gone. Ben Trevisanu with a, with a huge run for this offense. Those are the kind of plays you need to just boost your offensive like, yeah, morale. Just, just oh. to get the offense going, you know, your, your old line, you know, you guys aren't, if being an offensive lineman, if you aren't moving the ball a lot, you know, your O-line's morale gets down. Oh, they give it to Adam, a big man. Wow, 64. Adam, Adam Perot dragging players Perot. down the field. He drags some bodies along with him and gets five yards, makes it that is, That's a five. good That's run. a phenomenal run right there. Six yards, maybe? No, five. Uh, uh, yeah, he gets five hard yards. You know, drag, he was dragging that DN down the field. And that's that's not an easy thing to do. You, oh. you know, having a guy hanging off of you and continuing to run, that is great. Got to have those feet chugging. Oh, yeah. You know, utilizing your fullback like that. Oh. Oh, he gets a three. Three oh. yards, two yards, maybe? Looks, looks about three yards to make a third down and three two. Team, ben Trevis knew on the carry. He ben Trevis knew he, with, three. you know, the big run Number before. He gets two, hard, two or three yard yeah. yards here. Third and three. It's third and three. You know, they Second they aren't in field goal range for this junior division, but they are uh, definitely getting closer to the end zone, and that is a that is a huge positive for this offense. Yes. You know even even if they can take a you know, the rouge punt yeah, it to the end zone. You know oh here comes Ben Trevis again. with another huge run. Wow. I believe he gets the first down. Shifty. Number 18, ben Trevis he made a couple cuts, made a couple guys miss, and he is down. Getting the he's getting those first downs for these guys today. He's doing really good right now. I don't have his number on my thing. I don't have Chase. I can't say that. I'm sorry. Uh, Sarah Solo. Sarah Solo. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm sorry. Sarah Solo. Yeah, I don't have his number either. Or Zoe. Yeah, there's there's a couple guys without numbers on here. Uh, but uh, that's okay. We'll figure it out. You know, Dax Pringle didn't look like he was on the roster at all for no. the one that we have, but. Uh, could be on the other one. Y yeah, you know, there's there's multiple rosters passed around. Wow, that was a huge run. Big run. Oh, the ball. Wait. The oh. ball was taken away. Wow. By the core the alignment. The, the ball was stripped. I believe that. Wh who's that? 60s? 85. 85? 85. JJ. There's a fumble on the play. Di Number 85, JJ DeMichael. Oh, DeMichael. All right. And we were correct. <laughs> JJ DeMichael. <laughs> 
We uh, we do not know how to. We what apologize a, for some of the names, but uh, that is yeah. That's, that's got to be a defensive line's dream. Get that yeah. ball and start running. Oh yeah, just just being a lineman myself. I've had one oh, carry yeah. in my career. Uh, it was against White Pines <laughs> in my junior days, uh, playing for the Junior Corps Colts. But uh, yeah, it was it's probably so fun for you. I o wish. Honestly, I don't think I'd want to run the ball again. Really? Uh, I'm I'm not a. You know, I don't like to be hit a lot, so I like to hit <laughs> first. And I'm trying. Oh, oh, the number 63 almost had him in the backfield. Oh, oh, the, and the ball is stripped again. Oh, it looks like oh, it's core ball. It looks, it looks like he was called down before yeah. the ball came out. But number 88, Diego Campagna on the carry. He gets oh. It was Diego Campagna coming around the edge there. Number 83, Keegan Sims. Number 52, Drayden Brock. Number 32, Max Clement. Looks like. Eight, 83 and I believe what number 52 Drayden Brock was in on the tackle as well. Yeah, that would yeah. have been two back. To, oh, oh, that see that steel off line. What happened? Oh, he was just uh, down, seeing if he could get the numbers for me. Oh. But uh, yeah, uh, Core gets uh, the the Spear Heights D lineman to no, jump. A mouth guard warning against the Colts. Oh, I oh. guess it. I guess they called called it off due to a mouth guard warning. So they won't. So they won't there was not a penalty on the play. It was just a warning to the core Colts to make sure everybody's wearing their mouth guards. You know, that is a huge aspect of the game, making sure all their equipment's on, making sure everybody's protected properly. <sighs> oh, number 29. He cuts it up. Oh, makes it good. Oh, my Lord. What a good run. Melkor with huge nice run cuts, running, running back into the middle of the field. He cuts you back know, against both 17 and the first one. <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, Made a couple cuts there, made a couple guys miss, and he is he, he's getting a lot of success the running the ball the today. And, you know, yards. they are not, you know, losing, you know, one of your top players like Nathan Gazzetti to hockey or whatever. You know, he's doing – he is at hockey today, but uh, wh whatever, you know, what a player is away – and he is a top player. Number 34 with a l puts, huge run. Puts he's on the Jets, and he's gone for the touchdown. He broke, I think, three or four tackles there. He was he just threw on the Jets, like you said, and he ran full speed into that end zone. AJ Cochamilia is showing some great athleticism this game. Yeah, he, he is putting in a... Lot of work, Lar yeah, lot of he's putting in, he's putting in a great uh, campaign for him to be our starter, starter <laughs> here. Uh, you know, and when Gazzetti is here, he plays both ways. So maybe you know they'll put a they'll start subbing in guys, making sure Gazzetti gets a break, or you know, making sure everybody's rested, getting more players in. And it's lethal to have that depth in your in your roster. Yeah, that's uh, oh, kick is good. The kick is good. It is 14 now 14 to nothing with 519 left in the second quarter. But uh, Cora's depth compared to a lot of the teams in the Sioux right now is it's like it's second insane. to nine. There's, yeah. you know, I, I believe there's probably 45, 50 kids on this roster here. For Cora, and there's probably about only 30 for Superior Heights, and that makes a huge difference. That you is know, a big difference. being able to rotate guys in and out of the lineup, you know, having talent, you know, Everywhere. up and up and down yeah. the the depth chart is what's going to make your team successful. And you know, I know you guys are a little short-handed this year. Yeah. Uh, you guys, uh, you got. Who who's playing both ways? Daniel Bumbacko, uh, and uh, Matt Trudeau. Matt Malcolm is as well, I believe. He, I, really? No. No, he doesn't play defense. No. Oh. Jaden, yeah, it's Trudeau. Oh, okay. Trudeau, 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 Trudeau definitely. You know, they're two top receivers, uh, playing both ways. Yeah. That's uh, that's a little tough when you're running routes all game long and <laughs> trying to catch a breath. You know. Yeah, you know. Especially you, being on most special teams, it's hard to get a break. Yeah, and. Uh, you know that's that's the way it is sometimes. You yeah. know, Cora didn't have large teams in the past, and no, right it, now it they definitely they have helps having depth. Oh good, yeah, good special oh, teams nice, play. Nice good hard tackle. hit. 
Uh, number 32, Kickoff is fielded by number Maxim. 32, Max Clement. Number 36 Short with the tackle. The yeah. uh, Max line. Clement with the catch to make sure Cora doesn't get that ball back. Oh, and and sorry, who was on the tackle? 36. 36. Cohen Manchalengo. I think he's a first-year player. Yes, Cohen Manchalengo. He played coached with him the, in SMFL. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he played, played with Darren's the, team. He played with our little brother Darren, who plays for the junior St. Mary's Knights this year. Uh, he uh, Cohen Manchalenko was a top performer in SMFL yeah. this summer. He ran the ball extremely hard. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen him much in the running back Oh, he's position. playing linebacker. Yeah, he's playing defense mostly today. You know, and that's not necessarily bad. Oh, no, that's that's definitely not a bad thing. Ben Trevisanu with another hard run. You know, it looks like he gets a couple more number yards. Ben Trevisanu on the carry. He's met immediately by number 37, Curtis Price. And number 37, no Curtis play, Price with a tackle. And, wow. uh, you know. He got half a yard, maybe. It's not even. Men Chalenko was a good runner because he was a hard hitter. And yes. playing him at linebacker, you know, he, that's uh, how you get stops with a prominent defense and – 100%. That he would look for, like, contact when he was running the ball. Yeah. So, you know, when you got a player that loves contact, you know, he's going to want to go out there and hit some people. And that's uh, what you expect out of your linebackers. <laughs> you need it. You, you need that physicality when you play Another football. Tackle by and, number 37, uh, Curtis Price. Can't be scared. Yeah, you can't, can't be scared be. out there. Uh, you got you to gotta lead with uh, your body and you got to throw your weight around. And. That's how you don't get hurt. Just going all out. Yeah, you, you know, if hurt. you're if you're scared and you're leaning back or whatever, that's uh, oh look at that, Big another tackle stop. in the backfield, number seventy five. That is Ken, Ken Goodship. Eighteen, Travis Newton on the carry. He's Ben Travis New. Fourth down and twelve. He's trying out there. Yeah, he's he's had a lot of success. I don't. I think uh, you know, Cora switched up their defense. They they're number blitzing a lot. They uh, it looks like they're running a five man line now. So. You know, having more heavy, a heavier set up front is you know causing issues for that O line for Superior Heights. Yeah. Superior Heights set to punt is fourth and twelve with three oh seven left on the clock. Oh, that's a better that's, punt. That's that's a that's a huge punt. Oh, from that's a flag. Yeah, holding on Cora. <laughs> Number two, I love Number 23, that. Hunter Dickinson. Number two, Nixon Blair. Uh, looks like he is <laughs> <getting> <laughs> Looked like he tackled him. Looked like he was uh, tackling the uh, number 39. Uh, that is Nick Deering. So he's going to get a penalty. Number 23, Hunter Dickinson was the returner on that. He got, I believe it was about seven yards, seven yards yeah. there the return and he loses and five of them and yeah. he he's losing a lot looks like ten. 10 wow 10 for holding so he's <laughs> losing 10 yards that uh, can't be a great feeling you know you you fight for those yards and then uh gets penalty gets back. them drawn back yeah. that is uh that's tough that is tough but uh you know core core's offense can get those yards back uh 100 they can which uh, is an upside when you have a strong offense. You know, you guys have a strong offense. You guys are mostly pass heavy pass this year heavy, because yes. you have all those speedy, weapons, phenomenal receivers. Yeah. You know, Daniel Bumbacco, I believe he's a – is he a grade 13 this yeah. year? Yes, yeah. So he will be off to university next year, I believe, uh, oh. if he has gotten a couple offers. I, I'm not sure. Uh, Number 29, Peyton Alcuri. I think it's one school. Is second down you know, there's, there's probably some schools out there looking at him, you know, with Sabercats and, yeah. you know, whatnot. They're Dylan Monaco put his tape Number together. Number 48, Lucas. Yeah, yeah, so he's going to send it out Lucas soon. So. Yeah, we'll so see what happens in the next few weeks, months -ish. Yeah, you know, even uh, getting some tape from this year and adding that in before you send it out, yeah. that'll be – a lot better, you know. You have a, you know, you guys are passing a lot more. He's had a, he's had some pretty great catches this year. Looks like Cora's second and five here. Oh, Superior jumps again. That can that can go either way. That can go either way. As Superior did jump into the neutral zone, right, but no? they could say that Cora moved first to make that guy jump. The refs are gonna discuss to see wh who's gonna get the penalty here. That happened when we played Superior. I, I really thought that our defensive line jumped like 
a lot, and and it was it ended up being this. Offside yeah, well, there there have been some odd officiating calls. Penalty. You know, that's but everybody's human. You know, we uh, we support our refs. We love having our refs out. Helpful. You know, we need we need you know refs to play this game. So, you know, when they make a call, that's their call. Yeah. Oh well, um, it looks like that's how it is. It looks like it's ruled a first down. And it is a first down. It'll be first down and 10 for the Colts on yeah. their own 48-yard line. If you would like to volunteer uh, to be a referee, I believe it is a paid position. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, we are definitely looking for s some younger offici officials to come in and take over to – uh, uh, these for our veteran, guys. yeah, so <laughs> for our veteran officials who have been out here for a number of years after their football career, supporting our community, making sure that you know we still have football to play. Yeah. And it looks like we have a false start on Cora, Cora so they're going to go back five. It's going to be first and fifteen. There's only two minutes and twenty seconds left in the half. Ooh. I That's believe it's just a good game so far. 7-0. Yeah. You you uh, I believe it is 14-0. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is 14-0. And it says 7-0 on the scoreboard. But it is 14-0. You know, holding Cora's offense to 14 oh. points in the first half is it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It is. Very, it's hard to do. It's, it's, uh, it's been hard to do for a number of years now. And, you know, Superior five. Heights being the last place team. In the league, great. they are they yeah they're doing a phenomenal job. They they have been striking core down as and much as they can. Yeah, and it's it's great. You know, even you know, it just goes to show that the last place team isn't that far off from the first place team. Yeah, and it can really go any way. It's like uh, White Pines yesterday. Yeah. White Pines, you know, they came out this season. They haven't been. You know, a huge program for the last couple of years. They haven't been very successful, and this year they've they're now, I believe, two and one. Yep. Uh, or are they two and two? And this is week four, right? Yeah, this would be week four. So I believe they are two and two. Yeah, I think because yeah, they played St. Mary's first week. Yeah. So I believe they are two and two. They they uh, beat St. Mary's last night with a score of fourteen to twelve. That was a close game, honestly. Yeah, it was a close game. It was. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a high school game go into overtime. Good cut. Wow, that was a great cut by number 29, Melkor. And he is brought down by number, nice 20, by number 29. 29. Fury. There is a flag down, though. 20. I believe it was Adrian Scott out there that made that tackle. 21, Chase Christie. Oh, I tackle. was wrong. It was 21. <laughs> Chase Christie with the tackle. Guess we need, we need Jim Monaco's eye. Yeah, I, b I believe he's got a little help over there, but uh, he does. but it looks like Cora is going to get uh, a ten-yard penalty for a block in the back. That is that is so upsetting as a running back when you know it, you make that play when you have a huge run, you know that gets taken away because of a penalty, and now you're backed up. You get, it's uh, first and twenty with a minute twenty-six left in the half. You know, you, you want to have those big runs to, you know, maybe get some more points before the half end. And if if Superior can hold them to just 14 in the first half, it, that's I think they have a chance to get right back in it, it, it. Oh, yeah. If Superior uh, if Superior is going to receive the ball after half, so. Nice run by number yeah. 34. It is. If they can, you know, make a stop, maybe get three side, points. Gets about six, makes it second down or, yeah. or even just get this stop that would be fantastic for them and then they can start on offense and maybe get some points after the half after a big speech from their coach Hypes them up I believe bit. it is coach Kluster over there who is their head coach huh. second and 15 second and yeah it looks like second and 15 for Cora nice five yard gain by number 34 oh wow that was a fast that was a fast cut right up the middle and he is swallowed up by defenders hey, no, looks Gary, like Gary, he gets a couple he's third it's three three yeah. yards maybe two uh you got about four yards there number 32 number is two clement. 32 tackle, clement gets the tackle there 
Coach Bernabucci is probably not uh, overly <laughs> happy with the result of this first half and, you know, the fumbles, but uh, the so execution has score. been there, you know. Oh, you, you adjust it. Yeah, you The you quarterback adjust. scrambles, gets hey, more yards than you'd think. Six. Yeah. Bryson Sloss seven? gets Bryson a nice Sloss six yards. It's going to be fourth and, fourth and long. Be fourth and about five. And wow. uh, now here's I believe where they're going for it. Well, I know, right? Like, yeah, you know, it is the end yeah, of the half. Yeah. There's 33 seconds and left. You're in their territory. So yeah, you're in their yeah. territory, and you know, Spirit Heights offense hasn't been, you know, it, they don't blow you away. So it uh, it's probably a smarter decision. Yeah, and it is swallowed wow. up by this Steelhawks defense. Wow, Steelhawks defense number 63 was in there. I believe. A little bit of a broken play there, and the ball ends number up. Number 37. Hands. Number 37. First down and 10. Josiah Bryant, Bryant number 60. Line. I believe it was 64. Uh, where's that? Oh, no, it wasn't 64. I believe it was 67. Uh, Carson Petit. Petit. You sure it says Petit? Or it might be. it. Well, that's how it would be spelled in French, but uh, it might be Petit. <laughs> Uh, if you were saying it as a, an English person. Yeah, oh, you Frenchie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh... Time out called by the Steelhawks. I hate getting these names wrong. I feel bad. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, we definitely want to make sure everybody's names are pronounced right. Uh, if you uh, are here or you know somebody that's here that can correct us, please do. Uh, <laughs> We are definitely first-timers that will not get all these r names right. Uh, we will try our hardest to get them right. Uh, but I was uh, in school the other day. Someone called me Tricanton. <laughs> you know what? Our name has <laughs> been uh, – our last name has been pronounced very wrong for a lot of years, and we know how it feels. So yeah. Uh, if, if you have any corrections, please do let us know. Uh, looks like Superior Heights is taking a timeout to draw up a play here. Coach Kluster is – in the huddle with his players, he is making. He's probably hyping up their offense. You know, getting them all set, seeing if they can get a big play big here. Play. Nice deep bomb. I, I assume they're throwing it. You know, it, throwing it would be uh, a smart decision here. But you know, in the junior league, quarterbacks aren't as developed. Yeah. You know, know you, how far you can throw. Yeah, you, you you work with your quarterbacks over. You know, you try to develop a grade nine every year and, you know, keep developing them so that, you know, your senior program can stru uh, can be successful with a great quarterback. You know, Matty Tucker is a great example from St. Mary's. Yes. He was, I believe all summer, he was being coached by Jordan Robinson Wright. Really? I believe was one of the quarterback, I, mean, he was, I believe he was the quarterback coach for the junior varsity Sabercats. And uh, yeah, he was, he's, uh, he's developed a. Uh, that was a quick throw. Nobody turned around for that one. It was uh, wasn't really near anybody. Number sure, forty so looked to be the intent. The Logan intended uh, Deering in Logan Deering. Yeah, number Logan two, Deering was the, was the intended the target. Time. Nixon Blair was the covering, but it wasn't really near anybody that time. Uh, there's another timeout called by Coach Kluster. Yeah, you don't want to go into <coughs> halftime with all of your timeouts. You have to use them. Yeah, you know, if you're in this situation, you know, you can draw up a play or two and you can make sure everybody's on the same page and having a design play instead of, you know, something into your playbook that uh, you might have thought of for this situation. Uh, you know, that, that offensive line can definitely protect their quarterback and, uh, you know, he definitely has the time to throw that ball. So it's just yeah. uh, developing, like like I said, developing your quarterback, making sure he's patient, you know. Yeah. Reading. Reading the field properly. You know, that's that's not an easy thing to do. No. And as a quarterback, you got to know what receivers are doing what. And, you know, you, there's a lot of information going through your head pre-snap and post-snap. and. Yeah. Uh, oh, big pass. big Number pass. Number six, he grabs it. Comes down with the ball. Number six, Will Middow. Sure, so pass is that that Steelhawks bench is looking for a flag there. Gain on the play, makes the first down and 10 the there was some contact there on yeah. the play. 
Uh, uh, I believe that's just good de defense. defense. You know, well, yeah. if, if if a player's standing there, you know, you're uh, going up for the ball. It's uh, it's hard not to. It's hard not to have contact, before. but. Uh, here comes Spear Heights back out. They uh, looks like they're throwing the ball again. Uh, Number 87, it looks like. 87. Quarterback Aiden Wanch. Aiden Wanch with a nice sack to end the half. The Number Carpool nine. 14.
And welcome back, folks. Uh, we're getting ready here. They're doing their coin flip or conversation at the beginning to see who's defending which end zone. And right now I have Marcus Palumbo, an offensive lineman for St. Mary's senior varsity football team. Marcus, how's your season going? It's going great uh, so far. You know, we've had uh, really, really positive uh, outcomes with our, uh, our, our uh, leaders and our coaches uh, throughout the year. Uh, can't wait to, uh, to keep playing and uh, so pumped up for uh, next week's game against uh, Cora. Should yeah. be a good one. Yeah, next week's game is definitely going to be an interesting one, Cora being the top dog in, the in that uh, part of the league. You know, it's St. Mary's close second. Their offense is definitely high powered. You know, that offensive line is doing their job. Uh, you know, it sucks that you guys didn't get to see here on Heights this weekend. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we we were uh, hoping for another matchup with them. Uh, we're just about to get started here. So, uh, Marcus, what do, what do you think about your sideline? You guys seem pretty juiced over there every game. You, uh, you guys seem pretty intense. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, this year, you know, kind of changing up the culture a little bit. Um, all our leaders and uh, senior players are kind of helping out the juniors, you know, get adjusted to the senior uh, football lifestyle. Because uh, as you could uh, as you could see and as many people know, senior football and junior football, two totally different worlds, right? Yeah. Uh, senior football is just so much uh, faster faster pace and, and higher energy. So we like to bring that energy to the uh, sideline every, uh, every game. Yeah, the definitely. Number three three here I believe that is Cuglietta kicks off for Cora it is received by number 39 Nick Deering or Deary or no Deering yep Nick number Deering my Nick apologies Deering gives the kick off and takes it he gets about he gets about 10 yards on his return zero. there breaks a tackle it'll be first and 10 from about their 24 23 Diego Campania with the tackle yeah just to comment on, you know, Marcus talking about leadership and, you know, the culture, it's uh, – culture kills. Uh, a bad culture can kill a football team and bad leadership can kill a football team. And, you know, having – you know, seeing the improvement from you guys from last year, it's definitely being noticed that your culture and leadership is stepping it up this year and having – you know, making sure all your younger players get, you know, acclimated, it's definitely uh, – Harder hitting game and a faster environment uh, for in, at the senior level. Ben Trevisanu with a huge run. I believe he gets about 20 yards there. Tackled by a safety. You know, he got through pretty much the entire team. Yeah, that was a quite carry. Nice hard run right through the middle. Yeah, he's definitely been a strong runner for this Spear Heights offense, and he can't uh, he can't be stopped sometimes, and that's going to be an issue for Cora's defense. You know, they got to figure him out without uh, you know. I believe they're missing a couple of guys on defense this week due to other sports. Yeah. Wow, Look that was that, guy that was a huge huge hit. Number 64, Number Albert, 64 Perot. Albert Perot. He, down. he's just a big a man hop. rumbling. The, you know, like a guy that size, you know, usually Cohen in the junior division, you see him playing D-line or uh, offensive line, and that's usually what they're brought up as. And he's just playing that, he's playing that fullback position so well. Yeah, it's it's nice to see that uh, superior coaches recognize that uh, just because you're a big guy, you don't need to play on the line, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because like as you as you can clearly see, look at there he goes again. Wow. Yeah, number it's like that's five another yards. That's another five yards. And you know just you know finding speedy big men. You know in the NFL, offensive linemen aren't these slow guys anymore. You know, yeah. offensive linemen even at the Curtis university Price level are not out. slow. They're yeah. not. They're very physical, they're very agile, and they can move. Yeah. And that's what, you know, teams are looking for now with, you know, outside runs and pulling guards. 100%. And it's all about being explosive, exploding off the line. Definitely. And, uh, making good blocks. Nick Deering with a run up the – it looked a, bit, a little bit outside there, but he ran pretty much up the middle. He gets about 10 yards, and they're going to go for a first down. 
they are now getting into core territory, and this core defense hasn't found an answer for Adam Perot, Nick Deering, or Ben Travis New in this second half early here. You know, it's only been a couple minutes, you know, with nine minutes on the clock, and, you know, for them to score here, that would be phenomenal. You know, it would turn the momentum. Ben Trevisanu with another hard run. He's hit hard. You know, he only gets a couple yards there, but, you know, that's been the game for him. He's, you know, he's gotten a couple hard yards, and he's broken a couple big ben runs, and that's yeah. his role, and he's dominating at it. And, and you know what? The Steelhawks had quite uh, a good Price game. It's just a few unfortunate uh, turnovers in the red zone that have cost them some points. Uh, but uh, as everyone can clearly see, the Colts are having uh, quite a quite a phenomenal game. Uh, oh, oh my gosh! Turnover. And that's that's that's, uh, that's what been we're talking about. Loose, right the there. Yeah, that's the what we were talking about. The unfortunate, about. The unfortunate the events ten, that uh, you know one Sunday mistake can turn an entire drive in the momentum of the game and. That fumble right there, it just, it's cost the Superior Heights offense. Yeah, and, and especially against a team like Cora in this, uh, in this league, you cannot leave points on the board. Um, so it's quite uh, unfortunate to uh, make those kinds of turnovers, especially in, uh, in the uh, opposite team's uh, end of the field. Yeah, So definitely. You know, c you, you can't have, you know, points left out there on the field you know Cora dominates and they put up points every game and right now they aren't putting up a whole heck of a lot on the scoreboard but they have been getting good offensive drives you know even without you know top players at the helm they are still dominating on the offense yeah um, as many people know, Nathan Gazzetti is a uh, rep hockey player, and he's not here today, and that's just uh, an unbelievable loss to the uh, Colts offense. Yeah, we, we right could talk about him all day long, yeah. about all of Second the sports and everything that he does, and he's just phenomenal. But, uh, you know, even without him, you know, Cora's dominating. So, yeah, you know, definitely. this uh, 29 here, I believe that is Peyton... Say it again. Yeah. Malchiori, I was corrected by one of the lovely people in the booth here. And that's Diego Campania, I believe, wow, number 88. What a run. He breaks a big run here. And it's Diego been Campania, him, number 29, uh, Peyton Malchiori, and number 34, AJ Cochamilio, just being super explosive on all of their runs and yeah, it's just, just been insane. Yeah, they've been dominating the run game, uh, no question. Uh, outstanding runs from all three of those uh, players. Uh, they're, yeah, they're really, really dominating this game right now, and that's the reason that uh, Cora is up uh, three scores to none. Yeah, definitely, and you know, you can't have those big runs without the big guys up front, and Cora's offensive line is coached very well. They uh, the convert is blocked and have the score is now the Coach, Coach Casagrande over there as one of the offensive Superior line coaches, off. as I know. Uh, and he is very particular about uh, the blocking and everything, and he wants you know everything done a certain way, and that's what wins them games. And you know they're coached very well, and they are coached to perfection. Obviously, they're not perfection, but you know <laughs> that's that's what they want to be held to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, going back to culture, that's the culture at core. You know, everybody's held to a high standard, and, you know, they're held to a high standard because they know that they can be. And I feel like that's being spread around the, the league, especially at White Pines, you know, them dominating yeah. against Mary's yesterday. Uh, the, the game ending in yeah, a 14-12 to 12 score, that was uh, a big surprise. I wasn't here, but... Uh, you know, reading about it and finding out the score from, you know, posts and uh, other sources. They've uh, they've definitely stepped up their game yeah, this year. Yeah, they've come a long way. Um, their entire coaching staff has put <coughs> so much time and effort uh, into the program. And, oh, my goodness, we have a bobbled kickoff, and it looks like Cora has the ball. 
Does Cora have that ball? Cora, I believe Cora recovered that ball. Yes, they did. The onside kick is recovered by number 89. Number Jackson 89, Hiltz. Jackson Hiltz and the Cora Colts recovers that ball. From the -yard line. And now it is going to be first and 10 for Cora. You know, special teams is a third of the game, as we mentioned earlier, and, you know, being dominant on special teams can win you the game. And Cora here, they're dominating on special teams. You know, I don't believe they've punted. Um, you know, their field goal team has been a little shaky, but uh, that's all right. You know, I believe they're working a new kicker this week, I believe. Uh, I'm not too sure. I believe it's usually Nixon Blair from what I've seen before, but I uh, could be entirely wrong. Yeah, and like what you said about special teams being a third of the game, especially in the senior uh, level, uh, it, it's just so important to have a special teams unit who can uh, make something happen every time they're out there on the field. Um, I know uh, Mr. Orzetti, Coach Orzetti from uh, Superior Heights, is really big into special teams, and he's, yeah, he's uh, a that's kind of his bread and butter. So he's, he's, he's the special the teams guru, as the they say. Yeah, uh, right there. Superior Heights was the tackle. tackles Campania in the backfield for a three-yard loss. You know, Superior Heights' defense has been holding their own against this super high-powered offense, and I believe that's what's kept them in this game. Oh, looks like Cora swapped out running or uh, quarterbacks. It's Alex Varpio in right now instead of Bryson Sloss. I believe that is a uh, coaching decision just to get players, you know, in and get them experience in the game. From Bryson Sloss to number 89, uh, Jackson Hiltz. You know, it looks complete. like uh, Jackson Hiltz is now playing 13. wide receiver, and it looks like there's been a couple subs on the old line from what I can see, but, uh, you know, that's that's the, the talk about depth earlier. You know, they can put guys in and, you know, still execute. Oh, my. Is that there was a bobbled handoff and number 29, Peyton Melchiori, was the intended receiver with that handoff, and I believe it was fumbled. And Superior Heights will get the ball. Superior Heights recovered that fumble, and like we said before, that one mistake could be the turn. The turn of the game. You know, Spear Heights can gain momentum Carson from this Bennett. and drive down and Three score a couple and points. And the yeah, they need to score three. right now desperately in order to uh, hopefully like stay in this game. Uh, let, let's just hope that there's no uh, unfortunate turnovers while in the red zone this time. Because yeah, uh, this offense has been productive and they have been <coughs> marching down the field. It's just uh, once they get into the red zone, it's, uh, it's unfortunate error time. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Ben Trevisanu with another hard run. He is tackled. I believe that's number 87. Number 18, or no, sorry, 37. I believe that is uh, Price, Curtis Price with the tackle. Curtis Price once again. He's been uh, dominant, you know, getting in behind that offensive line, squeezing down as a defensive end, and he's been uh, very successful this game. I believe he has at least three or four tackles, and that's, uh, that's a pretty big game for... Uh, defensive end, especially in this league. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, very impressive to see that from uh, from a defensive end in the uh, junior vi division. Oh, and oh, here comes a nice run. I can't uh, see who that is, but there was a nice hard run, and very they nice broke Nick a Deering on the carry. Nick Deering, Deering. And seven with that and run, and he down. breaks a couple tackles, and he gets a first down for Superior Heights. This is where Superior Heights has struggled getting onto the other side of the field and then they have a mishap. But uh, I believe, you know, we're, we're believing in them up here in the booth. We want them to be successful and we want them to show that, uh, you know, they can put a great offense on the field as well. You know, it's just, uh, you know, with a first year quarterback, I believe their quarterback is, uh, is Carter Niebel. And I believe he is a first year player, so he uh, probably doesn't have a lot of experience with handoffs and whatnot, and that's uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. You, know, you, you want to build your quarterbacks up, you know, get a backup grade nine that, and your grade ten that you've you know worked with the year before, getting in there, 
in his second year, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way, and you just got to go with uh, what you got. Yeah, and you know what? It'll be interesting to see how uh, Superior Heights develops him because um, Gabe Barkley playing at the senior level now, uh, grade 13 Number returning player, is just an unbelievable quarterback, and it was it's, it's quite remarkable to see how um, Number 42, he Matthew transitioned Poole, from, from grade 9 all the way to, to grade 12, grade 13. Um, because he is a remarkable athlete out there on the field, and uh, he is kind of um, a Swiss Army knife in, in everything yeah. he can do out there. Um, I know when he when he played against us, he lined up. He played quarterback, he played corner, and he was also their kicker, um, kicking field goals and punting the ball whenever necessary. So it's it's always nice to have someone like that on the field who can uh, who can kind of do a little bit of everything. Yeah, definitely. You know, having having you know the developed guy on the field and making sure that uh, you know you have experienced players on the field is what uh, drives teams in this league uh definitely in the uh, at the junior level it's super hard to f you know when you don't get a big group of grade nines come out and you know the next year you have an inexperienced team well that was a nice punt uh adam Perot was stopped on third down hunter dickinson has been a phenomenal returner for cora this year I, he, I believe he has two return touchdowns on the year uh, he almost broke the edge there, almost nice cut back inside, but he is tackled Dickinson. roughly around Bring where. Yard line. Yeah, I remember right. watching uh, Superior and Cora in the first game of the season, and I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure he returned the opening kickoff of the season all the way to the house. So yeah, he did. He's, he, uh, he's been a phenomenal returner, and, uh, you know, we'll be excited to see him see how he transitions into the senior level next year 100% and uh, see if he can you know I I don't stand next to these kids quite often but uh, you know if he grows a bit and you know at, at Cora and other programs around the Sioux you know Mary's I know they have a f uh, program where they're doing uh, weightlifting and whatnot during the off season you know if yep. guys like that you know top performers get into the weight room and uh put the dedication towards football you know that's what creates good football players and yeah. uh, and and you know what when you look around the the senior league um all the the players who stand out in the senior league are the ones who've been you know in the gym on the field in the off season putting in the work trying to get better at, at their at their craft you know just doing anything they can to improve yeah definitely like uh, you know, Dante Scaglione is one, you know, he had an unfortunate injury last season with his knee and, you know, he's, uh, done, wow, that is, what a throw, what a long bomb from Passing Bryson Sloss. There is a penalty flag field. thrown on the All field. Bryson Sloss with a big arm, you know, it, it was up for the taking for any of those wide receivers, you know, it, it just b bounced out of their hands and that's an unfortunate, uh, play to happen you know I believe Cora probably would have got points on that one but yeah, uh, he, was, he was pretty open yeah <laughs> and uh, but there is a penalty on the field so I believe Cora will get yardage even though you know the pass was dropped yeah and, uh, and look what we were talking about with those guys you know putting in the work and, and standing out on the field another one a great example is uh, another returning player uh, Daniel Bambaco from St. Mary's yeah definitely he's yeah. He's just uh, a phenomenal football player, and he's he's another guy kind of like uh, Barkley who can kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, outstanding wide receiver option and uh, safety kicker. You do a little bit of everything, so that's uh, it's always great to have someone like that on your team. Yeah, definitely. And I know uh, Jin Trudeau was going to camps uh, down south of the border over the summer, and you yeah. know th those guys uh, played SaberCats football and got extra coaching from you know university play level coaches that played at that level and uh they are you know matt primo is the head coach and he was a wide receiver for laurier and he definitely loves coaching those wide receivers and making sure they're you know up, up to snuff for the league and uh down. daniel bombacco and Jaden trudeau are definitely a huge number example of that yeah i was just gonna mention the uh, sioux sabercats organization um, 
it, it was just it, it's it's a phenomenal way for players, uh, especially going into the senior level, to develop before uh, getting that first little uh, taste of senior action, right? So it, it's it's good for uh, for developing players uh, going into the season, and it's nice because uh, there are coaches and players from all schools around the city. Um, so, so that's always helpful to help uh, really develop all yeah, players and for each yeah. player to get a unique coaching style and yeah. help them develop a, a new skill that they might not have had. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Albert Perot uh, is now playing on the defense, and he gets a tackle in the backfield. I believe it was handed off to number 34 on that play. That would be uh, Coach Emilio. Uh, but... Bryson Sloss, a nice pass to number seven, Nathan Hyam. And Nathan Hyam runs it all the way into the end zone. I did but see two there, flags on yeah, the field. Yeah, there, there was a couple flags, so there, there could be a block now. in the back, or it could be some sort of, you know, holding. Uh, I guess we'll wait to find out here from the ref. He, uh, there, I believe, is two flags down on the field, so it could be the same penalty or two different penalties that were seen happening. And uh, this is it. It's it looks like it's going to get called back. Yeah. Cora's coming back to line up. It looks like they're going to lose yards on this play. It might have been after the. I believe it is. It's first down. So it's Cora. a block from behind against yeah. the Colts. And it is, is, first down. It first is down a block in the back, but Cora, uh, Cora gets, uh, you know, they, they still get a first down, but, uh, you know, having that penalty and not getting that touchdown is uh, costly at some points, you know, especially against this defense who has been holding them to three down. You know, they've getting them to third and fourth down. Nathan Hyam with a big run here to the outside. Looks like another wide receiver jet sweep from the core Colts. It was a great block by number 16. Number seven, uh, I believe that is uh, Batakio. Batakio, yeah. Batakio had a nice block there. Like we said earlier in the first half, you know, wide receivers blocking is number crucial to the run game, Frazier especially the for that off. core offense. You know, this core offense has, I believe it's – two, three wide receivers out there. That's the final but play they do the third the Colts still have, you know, guys that can block, and that is what's driving their offense. Uh, that is the end of the third quarter. It is still 20 to nothing for Cora. Yeah, and at the end of the quarter, now it looks like my time's up, and i got to hand it back over to uh, Landon Tricardin. Thank you so much for uh, uh, talking with me and uh, breaking down football. That's what I love to do. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, uh, we'd love to have you back, and uh, thank you for uh, being with us today. All right, here comes my little brother back, Landon oh. Tricarton. Love it. Oh, this guy's got a big head, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's he's a lineman. You, you know, we're we're bigger than most. Uh, yeah. But uh, here comes Cora back out. Uh, it is, I believe, first and ten. Looks oh, like Bryson pass. Sloss back to pass. He is hit as he's releasing the ball by number 32, uh, Clement. Sloss, the, pass intended for number seven, Nathan Hyam. the pass was intended for number seven, Nathan Hyam. Uh, we just started the fourth quarter. You know, speaking with Marcus, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about your program. How do, how do you guys uh, like the offseason program over there? Um, I, I love it a lot. I love it having like that extra time with my team you know gain you gain like that chemistry with everybody and um you know having the coaches there also it's just it's just such a good environment and, um we love to have it yeah that's definitely you know it's a great culture Three, builder diego Campagna, number 88 games. diego Campagna with a with a nice cut to make one man miss but it looks like he, the ball was knocked out of his hand but he was ruled down before the ball came out, so it is still Cora ball. Um, it is third down and 10. Cora hasn't been able to advance since switching field position. Uh, but definitely the, the off-season programs that, uh, you know, weight room-wise and building culture and leadership, that's, uh, that's where that all begins. Yeah. Uh, having a great off-season, you know, where guys are 
staying together and, you know, communicating still and building relationships. And, flag and you flag. know, that's what separates most programs in the country. Yeah. You know, all these top programs, you see them, you know, with their social media and whatnot. And, they you know, they're posting the their weight room workouts. And, makes it third and 20. you know, here on Heights is a great example of that. You know, yeah. they they're the number one team in the country. They they uh, went on to win nationally, and that all started when uh, their head coach came in and he brought out brought in uh, off season program and guys getting into the weight room. Yeah, it really and, helps. Uh, that that helps a lot. Car uh, core is now backed up another ten yards. It looks like uh, they hand off the ball. Right up the middle. It's a run up the middle to. 88. I believe that's. Number 88, Diego 88, Campania. Diego Campania Looks like who has. Five makes it fourth down. Gotten them another 16. five. I believe they're going to go for either a punt or a field goal here. I believe they're. Number 62, <laughs> Grayson Monero. The they are the lining up here. We'll see in a minute. It looks, looks like, like they're punting. punting. So they're going to try and get that uh, one point back as they missed the field goal earlier in the game. Yeah. Looks like oh, it is. Snap. Oh, Rugby it's punt. a fake punt. Number seven, Nathan Hyam is. He, he looks like he got the yardage. Yeah, it looks like he got the first down. He uh, ran out of bounds. He, uh, yeah, he got he got the first down. Fake punt number seven, Classic Nathan play. Hyam. I love it. That's, uh, that's uh, definitely why we pay attention on special teams. You know, when you know we're coaching special teams, you know, you always coach your contained guys to make sure the ball's kicked so that you know a fake can't get off. And Nathan Hyam just has speed to get off the edge. Yeah, he has phenomenal speed for for a junior level player. I believe he is a grade nine. Oh, wow. He's uh, another fast player that's. Gone to Cora, you know, you got Gazzetti, you got uh, number, uh. number 34, Cuglietta is, has been showing off his speed today. Number 29, Malchiori has been showing off his speed as well. Making a big case for themselves for that starting position. Definitely. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, he, uh, in the past, Chief I haven't Christie. heard a lot of these names, but, but uh, today it has been, you know, they're spreading the ball around and it's uh, been a great day for a lot of players. 100%. When you get those chances, too, you have to make them count. Yeah, definitely. You know, being being either first or second year players in, in the league, it looks like number 29, Malchiori. Number 29, Peyton Malchiori. He runs in, run. gets another he touchdown for the down, core though. Colts, but there is a flag, and it's probably going to be called back. It looks like it looks like it's probably going to be holding on the offense. Oh, the penalty is on Superior Heights by the looks of it. the The refs are talking to Cora, to the Cora captain, I believe, or maybe not. Uh, there was a. Was well, against light. So it's an illegal formation penalty against. Uh, the Cora so we got Colts. an illegal Five formation penalty against Cora. So Cora will go back five yards, and they will try again at that end zone. Uh, I believe it was because there wasn't enough uh, players on the line. I believe it is yeah. seven players that have to be on the line for this league. Really, seven? Uh, I believe it's. I believe it's six or seven. It's huh. Uh, it's not five. Uh, no, it is. Uh, it has. To, I believe it is. Uh, you know, your tight end and then uh, a wide receiver has to be on the line as well. Oh, I guess yeah. The receivers count. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. it looks like uh, Cora's coaches are getting an explanation on uh, the formation. From the referee here, they want to know, you know, what 
what was the issue with the formation. Maybe there was, you know, a guy slightly further back than he usually is, which, uh, yeah. you know, that's a little unfortunate. Mistakes. That's just a little bit – that's a little mistake that, you know, you can't have happen. But no. uh, today, today has been – you know, uh, a learning curve for a lot of players that uh, are getting in and uh, making sure, you know, you got all your guys on the line and whatnot, that's, uh, that's a quarterback standpoint, I believe. But uh, definitely oh. at this. Oh, Reverse. look at that. He's got all kinds of room. Daylight for days. That is a touchdown. Seven, Nathan Hyam. He is number seven on our sheet there. Lead to 26 to nothing. All right, so we are currently discussing players of the game here, uh, <laughs> but uh, just uh, just to put a little emphasis on Nathan Hyam, he uh, wasn't very uh, he wasn't a whole lot of offensive plays for him in the uh, in the first half, but uh, right now he is definitely making a name for himself in the second half. Um, we are going to decide on the player of the game for each team. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's been a lot of strong performances today and, you know, a lot of a lot of these players making a name for themselves. And it's going to be a tough decision for us in the booth. Uh, we'll, we'll make that decision as we go and... Uh, So uh, looks like Cora's is going to kick off. They do their uh, double, double fake, which uh, opens up a lot. You know, they they sometimes they'll kick it off with uh, the first player to get that onside. Oh, Cora doesn't yeah. do the double kick. It looks like they're just going for a short oh. kick again, to try and get the ball back. Number thirty-nine, Nick, Nick Deering, Deering, runs straight across the field. And it uh, doesn't look like there's – he gets very much. North-South, that's a flag where. And he threw that flags real down high. Late. And a flag has been thrown. Jackson so we're going to see what uh, is going on there. Hmm. Looks like it is on Cora. Yeah. Sorry, 89, oh. Alex Hoff no? with the tackle. What was it? I believe it was a mouth guard warning uh, against Superior Heights, right. and each team gets a warning. So north south, that's that's a, every every time I went to go return something, that's all my coaches told me was run north south. Yeah, that's uh, that's usually what uh, you want from your top players and your returners. Uh, you want uh, you know you want them to run straight up the field. You don't want them to run crossways because you're just uh, you're wasting yardage. And yeah. you're tiring yourself out for uh, for no gain logistically. So uh, looks like Ben Trevisanu with a, another big run up the middle. Number 18, Ben <coughs> Trevisanu on the carry. He gets three yards, makes a second down and seven. So Ben Trevisanu with Number another big run. He's Curtis been getting Price some hard yards this game for Superior Heights' offense. You know, Spear Heights hasn't scored, but, you know, Ben Trevisanu still has some of the biggest runs for them, and I think he's going to be a top performer for this team for quite a while now. 100%, I agree. Number 64, Albert Perot on the carry. He's and uh, Albert Perot four. again, yeah, you he's know, just a big four. man to take down. You know, we've compared him to uh, Caleb Thibodeau from the Senior League. And he's, you know, utilizing your fullback when you can is significant. You know, it's significant in a game when, you know, especially in this league when, you know, your fullback's a little bigger than the other, t than some of the other players. You know, he's dragging them around and having such a great game. Yeah. It's Looks like needed. Nick Deering again. 
He's getting tackled. Problem looks like for a one-yard gain there, but it's fourth and two with 6:39 left in the game. Number one, Gage Peters with the tackle. You can't really do much here. I, 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 I wouldn't punt it as a coach, but I think that's what they. I, I believe they're setting up to punt to get it out of there and just to, you know, keep keep core honest. You know, make sure they're. You know, keep them back. Don't give them the, that uh, field advantage that we were talking about earlier. Oh, it's a little bit of a bounce. Oh. And that's a pretty decent kick. It's out of bounds at about the 50. Uh, at the core of 50 here. I feel like he could have taken off of that. It was like the... Uh, yeah, I uh, that that looked like he could have ran for the first down there. He had a but uh, he's been coached up to punt that ball. Yeah. And, you know, Cora... Didn't uh, pressure that a lot. I don't uh, think they emphasize pressure on the punter in this league, but uh, it's it's definitely a part of the game, and you want to try and block that punt to, to gain the better field position. Yes. Put so much pressure on the punter, and you never know if he might, like, just screw up and shank the punt. So it's just it's so helpful. Yeah, like earlier in the game, you know, you had to – you had – you know, the punt that only went four yards. You had a punt that only went about 12. You know, you want to put pressure on a punter that's been struggling. You know, obviously in this league, in, you know, junior, you know, you don't have developed number kickers and whatnot. Ken but uh, on the carry. He gets three yards. Be second down it's number seven. 31, Cam Williamson coming into the game. Number 28, Jacob Nelson with the tackle. You know, he's tackled by number 28, Jacob Nelson. It's that corner. Good, good stand-up tackle. Yeah, we should have gotten a little lower. <laughs> coaching it up. Over. All right, all right, Coach Descartes over here. Yeah. You're coaching up players from the booth. He's a he's, uh, he's a DB. <laughs> gotta, that's gotta uh, teach that's my DB. yeah. You got That's your uh, bread and butter there. Cam Williamson with another run. You know he's he's dropped to the backfield again, by, number the 62. by number sixty-two. Number sixty-two, Grayson Monero. Grayson Monero. Third down and seven. He's been a prominent player on this defensive line, and he's yes. uh, he's stopped a few plays today from going big. You know, and it's just that it's just that one block. You know, and as an offensive lineman, you want to get that front four moving, and then you go to the linebackers. But you know, if you can't get, you know, you got some sort of penetration, it's tough. Hand off up the middle, 36 takes it for the first down. Cohen Menchelenko. Back at bat, at running back, he runs he hard up the middle for a first down. Yeah. You know, we with it from him. with four minutes left in the game, you know they're they're just trying to run the clock down, keep yeah. the clock rolling, especially uh, you know being up twenty-seven to nothing. Yeah, you know, no you need. you just you you don't want to you know hurt any players. Yeah, so. you know you want to put you know you're getting in the in the backups late in the oh. game. Oh. Wow, good grab. That was a phenomenal catch. Number you know, 12. he adjusted and, and you know, came back for that ball. That was number 12. Number Alex, 12 Varpio. Alex Varpio. Alex Varpio passed through a, through a beautiful pass to down. Micah Cuglietta. Number 21, Chase Christie. <laughs> that was, um, like, that was just a phenomenal catch, you know, coming back to the ball and, yeah. Jumping right in front of the DB. Yeah, that was that was amazing. You know, fine. You know, coaching wide receivers is so hard because you know it's all up to them to develop their awareness and yeah, you know you can't decisions. just throw short balls in practice. You know, you want to develop the you know their catching ability and making sure they're they're uh, running He's their running routes properly. But uh, number thirty-one, Cam Williamson, with another hard run for about Colts, five yards. It's gonna be is about second. It's gonna be second down and about five. Number sixty-seven, Carson Pettit with the tackle. Ooh. Number sixty-seven, Carson Pettit, with the tackle. Looks like Cora's running this clock down with you know only three minutes left. You know they're just trying, trying to get y yardage to continue with the clock and to can you Light continue rolling right. that clock and getting this game over yeah you know obviously you know all those players want to play more football every day and 
after each game, you know, you just know. want that extra Legal quarter. But that's you know, it's a it's a coaching decision to run the clock, and you know, if you're a run dominant team, that clock's gonna keep running. So, yeah. uh, Cora, it looks like they got a penalty, and it's second and ten now. Looks about second and ten, second and nine, from where we're sitting, and yeah, se yeah, second and nine ish. I believe it is Zane Murdoch that has been subbed in at quarterback. He hands off to Coach Tim too. Beautiful. Yeah, Zane Murdoch was another player. was was another dominant quarterback. That's uh you know he's a great nine. While, where Varpio and Sloss are great tens, you know you want to develop. Your grade nine quarterback for yeah, next year, and while also Number playing your grade tens, you know, ha having your grade tens help that grade nine acclimate to the game that yeah. is yeah. high school football. And Teach them how to make better decisions and look, read the field more. It's yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, there it is. You seen him scan? He scanned right side, looked instantly left, and threw it. And and you know that's that was his option, and yeah. he was being pressured heavily from that left side, or while well, his left, uh, the right side of the line, though. Is up by number 21, Chase he, it was Before thrown to Cuglietta <coughs> and Chase Christie with beautiful coverage again. Yeah, love to see it. Love to see it from the DBs. As a DB yourself, you're just uh, loving watching the coverage and love watching it. them throw the ball, eh? Yeah, I don't. Well, you know, I don't get too much action myself with that that kind of game, like passing and everything. I have to. Oh, that sounded painful. <laughs> Oof! There was a big uh, thud. <laughs> oh my gosh! They didn't blow it down because a block kick. Uh, if you recover it, you can uh, <laughs> run it into the end zone. Uh, number looks like nine. Up by or, eight. sorry, Bryson number eight, Sloss Bryson Sloss. Down. He picks it up <laughs> after it was blocked. Yeah. Ref looked at them and was like, keep going. <laughs> yeah, the ref kind of was like, oh, well, uh, you guys can keep going. Uh, <laughs> but uh, usually yeah. after a kick, if it's blocked or whatever, it's blown dead. And for especially after a point after, if it's uh, not missed. Yeah. Looks like it was number it's 62. I think, he caught, I think it's because he caught it. I don't think it hit the, the ground. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought it bounced off the ground and it kind of bounced into his hands or whatever, but uh, Cora's defense coming out on the field, you know, Superior Heights defense stopping Cora again, you know, yeah. figuring, figuring out their offense and making sure that they don't get any big plays, you know, has been good for them. I believe that is a false start penalty on... Superior Heights, it looks like. Superior is doing a great job defensively. Yeah, like, defensively, like Superior Heights has been dominant today. You know, holding that core uh, high-powered offense to 27 points is, is phenomenal. It's uh, it's, it's great. Uh, it's first down. That penalty was declined. But, like, you know, Superior Heights offense is... They just haven't gone rolling yet. And, I mean, they are up against a really good, developed Cora Colts defense. So Yeah, those D linemen working with Coach Elliott over at Cora. He was uh, my coach at one point, and he is uh, he's, he's a stickler for, for you know, perfect form and uh, making sure that uh, number one, Gage Peters, you, number 18, you're Chase doing what you're Colts. supposed to right. Uh, that's where it starts. And, uh, you know, he develops all the kids that come through his program. And, uh, well. you know, he does it very well. Yes. Yes, he does. He does it very well. Uh, Toss to the right side. There's uh, been phenomenal defensive linemen and phenomenal offensive linemen that he's worked with. Yes. That have played at Cora. So. Travis Noon on the carry again. He gets the first down. And uh, he only gets them for the first couple years, and then they move on. But, uh, you know, him building, you know, him setting first the building blocks for uh, the senior coaches and making sure they they uh, know what a down block is. Yeah. And, you know, having them, you know. Progress. Progress properly and yeah. 
with great coaching is it's uh it's great ideal. for our it's uh, ideal. It's yeah it's ideal. it's definitely ideal uh but Good it's time. great for our us senior coaches when uh number 39, we get a player Gary, that it that you know they come two. up in grade 11 or whatever and they don't know anything Lucas about Hurley football or they know what football is and but they don't know specifically about their position it's a little bit harder to focus on yeah. you know developing them while also developing Everyone you know else. our our top performers and our you know our depth that have been playing since grade 9 or even since SMFL yeah so i was i was one of those players as well uh <laughs> i i came out in grade 10 uh, I didn't know anything about football. And, and oh my gosh, wow. Ben Trevisanu off to the races. Wow. Ben Trevisanu runs, runs right hard side down the right side, side of the field. Nice round of applause he for that He has been phenomenal. He, he is going to be our player of the game for Superior Heights as yeah. well. Uh, he's ran the ball so hard. He's dominated the run game today and you know, just right there. That, that is just proves that's, that just proves yeah. that he sh should he definitely deserves this award today. Hundred you know, percent. Spear Heights hasn't been this close to the end zone, and it is because of Ben Travis Anu. You know, good run. He put he put that core defense in the dust. Yes, he did. I uh, I didn't see the tackler there, but it was uh, I don't, it was I don't know, know. safety. I think it was a safety <laughs> number eighteen. I think. But uh, he was he was definitely gone if we believe it was number 18, Chase Venn. Uh, we'll, I guess we'll try to see as he jogs off the field here. But uh, we believe it was Chase Venn who caught him. But uh, if if that it weren't for him, you know, Ben would have a touchdown right now. Yes. And they are, they are on, I believe, the seven-yard line or the eight-yard line. And that is the closest they've been all game. And... I believe they should just give that ball back to Ben. I, I, I him, think they uh, him too. or uh, Perot, who have been running extremely hard. You know, Perot's a hard guy to tackle, but that Ben's uh, just shifty. Yes, he uh, he's been dominating this uh, core of defense all game long. Say, so run up the middle with Perot, set that up a little bit, and then fake it to Perot, and then give it back to Ben. That that's uh, that's our all-star coaching point from uh, LT. Mr. <laughs> from <laughs> Landon Jacarton up here, but uh, he's still got a few years before he's done playing football. Uh, oh yeah, hopefully, hopefully a, a little more than I'm thinking. You know, a, you know after SaberCats and you know if you don't go university or whatever, the Sioux Steelers program is a great way to get that itch out. Yeah, it looks like they're lining up in a heavy set up front. Oh, a pass. It's a pass. Beautiful a Beautiful catch. pass and catch. I believe that is number six or... Number nine, Chase Carasola number finds number, number six. six catch again. Number Will nine, in the end zone Carter the Nebel. Steelhawks touchdown. Number six, Will and it's Middow. Number six, Will Middow is found in the end zone. And that is Superior Heights' first touchdown in the game. It comes late, but, you know, that... Builds great momentum for next week's game. You yeah. know, going into, I believe they're playing uh, White Pines, who did beat them earlier in the season. So, you know, building that confidence and you know getting those points definitely helps set up for the next game, even in, even late. Yeah. Especially, you never want to come out of the game with a goose egg Dylan on the scoreboard. Yeah, definitely. I know. I know. Over my years in the high school pro program at Cora, you know, we put up a lot of goose eggs, and uh, <laughs> I was just fortunate enough to be uh, a little bit later in the Tom Annett era over there because in his first couple seasons there, he, you know, they had a small team and they they fought very hard and. You know, they install they instilled the culture and leadership over there, and that's what's driven this program, this uh, core program, for many years now. Yeah. And uh, I believe that uh, you know that's starting to follow suit around the league. White Pines is you know they've they tried to field a senior team a couple years ago, and then they ended up having a couple injuries and had to pull out. 
which was unfortunate. You know, they have a couple of uh, great 11s right now not playing football this year because they couldn't feel the team. And they are staying at White Pines because they want to be a part of that culture and a part of that leadership and a part of that coaching staff over there. Because yeah. when it's so you unfortunate know, when you can't feel the team. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, White Pines hasn't been able to feel the team in a while, and it's uh, it's uh, it's not that it's a uh, it's a bad school or whatever. It's just you know a lot of players transfer out or. You know, they go to a different program around the city because, you know, there isn't a rule where you have to go. Diego Campania receives that ball, and he is tackled oh, by cool. a group of Steelhawks there. The kickoff, it back to the but, you know, White Pines line. definitely, you know, making a comeback this year. And, yeah. you know, they're building a great culture over there and a great leadership group. And, you know, they're great 11s that have stayed, you know, when you have your grade 11s transferring out because you don't have a senior team, it's kind of hard to build a senior team. And, yeah. you know, you do, you never have enough grade 10s to build one grade 11 senior team. Uh, we did have Ben Trevis new as the player of the game, and our player of the game for Cora is going to be A.J. Cochamilio. He had a phenomenal game with Beautiful a few huge runs, runs yeah. for Cora. And, you know, we, we liked how he played today. He ran the ball hard, you know, coming in for uh, Nathan Gazzetti, you know, that is uh, that is not a an easy role to fill, no. especially when, uh, you know, he is a top running back in the league. Yeah, especially with his legs. You know. Yeah, especially, especially, you know, with his athleticism. We, uh, we definitely are giving props to A.J. Cochimilio for, you know, having, his, having the game that he had. All right, 50 seconds left. It is there what, is seven, seven it is, 27 to seven. Yeah, it, it is 27 to seven, and there is 49 seconds left on the clock. And Cora's offense just took a timeout, I believe. Yeah, couldn't couldn't. Uh, uh, they, they they might be uh, getting into the victory Four. position, or they're running oh, a play man. here. I believe I believe they could get into the victory position depending on. Zane Murdoch yeah, playing yeah. wide receiver right now. Zane Murdoch. Zane Murdoch trying to make a block make there. You know, trying to. Well, it's five. an inside run. Wide receiver blocks aren't uh, hugely yeah. important, but, you know, making sure that guy stays outside, you know, making sure he doesn't come into the box is uh, definitely a part of your job as a wide receiver on a run. And uh, definitely. Zane Murdoch definitely showed that he wanted to make that block. Yeah, and I hate when wide receivers come, like, it's a run play, they and they run me off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I believe that is Williamson. 31? Williamson with a huge run oh, at the end of the game to score a touchdown. I believe Ken that is, that's, that's 82 yards. 82-yard run yards. to end the game here. So hard to pick. I mean, it's not the ending game. of the game, but uh, to end the Coral offense of game, you know, that is that is a huge play. You know, another another huge run from, you know, that Cora offense. the depth at Cora. I know. You know, their running backs are phenomenal. And I believe... I believe, you know, they have seven seven guys touching the ball, you know, That's all game crazy. long, seven or eight guys, and usually you only got one or two. We do have an injured Superior Heights player on the field after that play, uh, so there will be an injury timeout. But just, you know, having having that depth and having the guys that can run that ball and having guys that can sub in whenever, they, whenever you uh, need be. Yeah. It's really late in the game. You don't so, need your you don't need your starters getting hurt or anything. So yeah, you know, being up late in the game, you want to get you know your backups in and you know utilize that depth later on in the game if you're up. You know, obviously, if you're down in the game, you want your top players out there. But yeah. Cora, being up, they have put Zane Murdoch in. You know, they got uh, Williamson in. Uh, I believe Menchelenko had a carry as well, and. You know, the, just utilizing your depth across the board. There's definitely linemen in there that are that are not starters. There's receivers that are in there that aren't starters. You know, they're rotating quarterbacks. 
you know, just trying to gel guys together, you know, and give them the experience that they need. Oh, and Superior blocks. The and Superior blocks another block kick. By number five, Ethan Fisher. And, you know, and the Colts if, if this was a close seven. game and, you know, Superior Heights is making all their kicks and Cora is, you know, has a couple block kicks, that's, you so know, special teams. That's a special teams play. That'll and win you the game right there. That, that could win you the game if it is close. And obviously today it's not close, but, you know, that's that's definitely a positive showing that Superior Heights has a strong special teams uh, presence on the field, especially on field goals and extra points. It was like yesterday, they, uh, Mary's, they missed the field goal. I think they're a PAT, and they, they lost by two points. So, like, without, yes. without that without so that missed PAT, they would have been down by one, and then they would just <laughs> get another PAT. Yeah, exactly. You know, even just trying to get that uh, – that extra point on a punt or, a, you know, the rouge rule. Yeah. Uh, that, helps. That, that, that helps, you know, getting that extra point, putting putting yourself one point ahead of, you know, a normal score is, you know, the a plus for Definitely. your team. And, you know, it gives you an advantage in a close game and it gives you an advantage, you know, if a team's coming back, you know, they, they get that – that touchdown and that field goal, but they still need that one extra point to get uh, in there. So they got to go for a two point conversion or something. And here comes, I believe that's Nick Deering yeah. with a nice stiff arm, but number 36, Cohen Menchelenko with a nice, another special teams oh, tackle. On Holds on for dear life and gets him down. And uh, that's, that's the, no. What we've seen from Cohen Manchalenko throughout 36, the summer, and now translating and into the, the high school football, score, Colts we uh, we have definitely Very seen nice him make offset. some strong tackles. Zane Murdoch, it looks like he's coming out on defense as well. <laughs> That's awesome. And it looks like number three Cuglietta is getting out on defense. I believe he's been out there uh, for a little bit now, and yeah, I think so. Yep, that is yeah. number 18, Chase Van playing are, safety. Are they calling the game? Yeah. They called the game. I, I believe so. they have. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I'm very. Uh, or I'm not too sure what is going on here. I think they did. All the refs are walking over. Yeah. They that is the that is the game. That the refs game. have called the game. Yeah. The final score, 27 to seven. Uh, Thanks, Lynn Craig, for being here with me today. Thank you, everybody, for listening to our first time common commentating. You know, we uh, definitely uh, had fun doing this, and we're uh, looking to be back for the next game. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, our next game will be at 7.30, I believe. Yeah. And it'll be Cora playing the Superior Heights Steelhawks. Senior. Senior, senior varsity teams are playing next, Ooh. and uh, that's it for us. See you guys later if you're watching the other game, and thanks for listening.